Okay, so in this video, we're going to be doing a comparison between DirectX 12 and DirectX 11 in The Witcher 3 uh, Next Gen Update. So in one of my previous videos, I had a lot of people saying that DirectX 11 runs better and that I should try it. Um, so I thought I would try it in a video and let you guys know the differences in performance and, and if it looks any different visually and the settings that you lose by going to DirectX 11. Uh, so before we get started, let me show you my settings that I have picked out here. These settings will remain the same throughout both tests and will not change at all. And you know, we're not using ray tracing or DLSS because that's not available in DirectX 11. And then uh, these are the rest of the rest of the settings right here. Uh, dynamic resolution scalings on, sharpening is at high. Uh, these are all the same here. Uh, we, won't, we won't be using NVIDIA here works. And these are the settings right here. And these will remain the same throughout both tests. And then these will also remain the same throughout both tests as well. And I do play at 1440p in case you were wondering. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, we're getting right around 90 FPS right now. Let's go. Oh, turn around, turn around. There we go. Uh, 75, 76. I did pick a relatively um, challenging area to run the game in, like a very, very busy area. Um, I wasn't going to just do this in like a forest. I thought I would come to like a uh, a big city, you know. But we're getting like between 90, 75. Ooh. Okay, it gets a little more busy around this area too. Down to 60. Into the 50s. Man. You know, one thing I'm noticing is that it looks like we have a CPU bottleneck. Um, as you can see, the GPU is not being fully utilized right now. It's bouncing between 80 and 70%. Um, and also, the GPU power is not where it should be. I have a 3070, and that should be right around 220 to 240 watts. And we're at like 165 there. Um, you, and I know some people think if you have a CPU bottle, like your CPU, CPU utilization should be at 100%. Not always. Games usually don't use all the cores and threads in your CPU. So it could be fully utilizing two or maybe four cores in your CPU. But that would that would be CPU that would be a CPU bottleneck, but not uh like a hundred percent utilization on your whole CPU. And I think that's what's going on right now because our GPU is not being fully utilized. Which is weird. But uh, yeah, between we we went we went down into the 60s in this market area here, and like into the 50s, but that could have been the 80s and 70s up here. All right, so now we have our control for this experiment. Now let me switch over to DX11, um, and we're gonna leave everything the same, and I'll even show you the settings. Everything will be the same. And then we're going to run through the same part of this town and we'll see if the FPS is different. And uh, yeah, let me, I'll be back in just a minute. <laughs> all right, so we are now in DirectX 11 and let me just show you all the settings are the same. And these are also the settings that you lose by going to DirectX 11. We don't have access to ray tracing or DLSS. Um, everything else appears to be the same. This is all the same. Uh, this is the same. And everything here is the same and we are using the same settings and i had some people asking if you do have all access to ultra plus in uh direct x11 and yes you do so there you go all right and now let's do the test and see if the fps right, is gross. better so far right off the bat it does seem to be doing a little bit better i'd say right about now we were dropping into the 80s before and we're at 106 and look at that, we are we are not um, CPU bottlenecked. We're at 99% GPU utilization, and we're at 231 watts, and we're at 110 FPS. 200, almost 240 watts, which is what it should be when it's fully utilized. 90, 100 FPS. Let's start sprinting here a little bit. And this area, we went down into the 60s. Which we do drop FPS a little bit, and that's to be expected. But we're still at 96 FPS. 
96, 100, 170. Okay, we're down to 80, 80s. Okay, that's that's to be expected though. There's much more going on in the frame, so. But yeah, there is definitely a big performance difference by going to DirectX 11. And also, for some reason, we don't have the CPU bottleneck anymore, which doesn't make much sense. Everything is the same except the DirectX version, so. Um, yeah. So I would say we gained a solid, like, between 25 and 40 FPS by switching to DirectX 11. You know, obviously it depends on what area you're in, area you're in. But like in that market area, we were getting into the 50s and 60s, and we were up into 80s and 90s, and sometimes even 100 FPS. So that is that is awesome. Come on. But yeah, there you go. In case if you were wondering, is there a performance difference by going to DirectX 11? There sure is. It's pretty big, and visually, I was paying attention pretty good throughout this test. Um, it That's looks so exactly the same. I can't tell the difference. Maybe if you pull up some like back to back or like side by side images of both, maybe you could tell the difference, but I can't, I can't. So yeah, there you guys go. There is indeed a difference between DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 in terms of performance. Go, go. So uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys found this helpful. If you did, then hey, drop a like down below. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.